I feel like every child needs to be accepted, not for who we want them to be, but for who they are, regardless Bravo. of Bravo! So yeah. beautifully said. Yeah. So, uh, that's one yeah. thing I'm taking. And <laughs> I remember seeing a post on Facebook by a mom where I think her child also had, not I think, her child also had ADHD. And there's a, a question skill thing they ask. I can't remember what it is. One of the questions was like, if he was thinking, if he thought um, he would ever fit in or something, and he said no, um, how he felt amongst other people. I mean, I feel like he said he felt uh, like... Um, secluded and stuff like but there was one question they did ask and then they asked um him that do you feel loved unconditionally and he said yes and then the mom really felt like it really warmed her heart for him hard to know that regardless of everything else he knows that he's loved and he's loved at home so in as much as everything might be hard outside everything might be unsafe outside they still know that, okay this is my safe space and i feel like that is huge because it's worse that they already don't feel like you said your son from age five or four already knew he didn't fit in outside that is so early and then of course he would also read the temperature in the room and if at age five regardless of how much you showed him love and acceptance he still felt like he didn't like life what would he have been like if he also was accepted at home you know yeah. so those things really hit yeah. home so this has really been yeah thank you for saying that yeah. and your home needs to be your safe haven. And if parents have themselves issues like, I don't like the kid, or I wish he wasn't like that, that is such a deep rejection in your soul. Mm -hmm. You feel that. I see with the being of my son, yeah. He said lately to me, you know, I have a great relationship with all three of my kids. And he said, mom, one of the things I so appreciate in how you raised us, or has raised me, that we had the opportunity to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I was not like a drill, drill, uh, drill surgeon next to his schoolwork. I raised my kids and this, it is your responsibility because learning is a privilege and learning is a joy. And I want you to see it like that. If yeah. you've gone home with an F, I'm not, I would never send them, uh, give them, uh, ground them or punish them. I think it's ridiculous because if you do that, you, it is like anti-learning. You know, like my, my youngest son came home with a no homework pass when he was six. In, in his Olivia were in a little private school then a no homework class why because they behaved so well and said well kids that behave well that's normal if yeah. you feel good you behave well so I went to the to the principal first because I knew the principal I did barely I was first I wanted to talk to the principal what are your principals here and the school was very small like 25 kids 30 kids so I thought that's great for my other my other son right yeah. Uri and the principal said, no, I don't like this. I don't, I want my kids to like learn and love learning. And if you give no homework classes, it's the other way, way message. Yeah, there's a reason. Said, I agree. For, yeah. It's yeah. Like, and, 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 he said, and I said, if this, this kid doesn't have ADHD, they knew his brother. And they, this kid doesn't have ADHD. This kid is very, the opposite. So why do you go to reward somebody that is himself? There is no reward needed. Be you and we love you. and Or be you and we love you anyway. So yeah. the principal agreed. He would talk to the teacher. But I, in Holland, there is more connection between teachers and parents. That's more like you work more together. So I didn't know that in America, it's a little bit different, that you have to please the teacher and otherwise they don't like you. And I make it very general because there are, I met wonderful teachers too. But that's mm -hmm. what I faced then. So I really am very nuanced in this too. And then I spoke with the teacher and said, yeah, but how, I otherwise, how can I otherwise reward him? So you don't need to reward for behaving well and that the child likes to learn and yeah. he said yeah but they do the other kids so this i have to do it with him too so i don't want you to do it and i could talk with my son about it next day he came home again with a homework pass so then people say yeah the teacher will hate you now because i'm like this is so ridiculous because yeah. my argument is very is actually very logic yeah. and if, and i in when he was six too and they started in the public school for three months and i pulled them out because of all kind of things that happened maybe we just came as new immigrants right and I was uh, uh, in the Fridays, I was in, the, in both of their classrooms to see how it was going and to be there for them, you know, support it and see it's a new language. It was all not easy. And then there was a girl, um, and I always, as a parent, don't speak about the friends of my kids. I don't want to judge their friends in the presence of my kids because then you start to, if you teach them gossiping, you teach them uh, rejecting people. And if I would have worries, then I would handle that totally different. I don't speak about it now. Anyway, there was in that class, a girl, she was Brazilian and she was so lively. She was so bubbly. 
she was great, six year old, first grade. And she probably had also ADHD. So my son, youngest son in her class she was, he um, started, he came home with remarks that she was not so nice. He came home with the criticism he heard in school from the kids and the teacher. I was like, oh, that's wrong. So I was in the class again and I saw the girl sitting separately in the back of this class by herself totally. And I talked with the teacher, asked a little bit, you know, the teacher was, okay, so he needs to be there. I don't want to, it's not my business, right? You have to be careful too. And then two weeks later or so, uh, and I, I like that girl so much. And my son told lit, and I was having a converse, told little ugly about it too, but the kids did. And I said, you know, this is so terrible. She's a little bit more lively than you guys. She has a hard time to, to not talk because she is, that's her. Doesn't mean she's a bad kid. We cannot think like that. It's terrible to do that. We want to be inclusive. Now, this is what you can teach in school, right? Not when you're in adult and therapy. So that's to you, that's not to my son, of course. And then we went to school because we were leaving to that small school that came afterwards. And I thought it was a better solution and it wasn't, but anyway, I thought so. And we made cupcakes at home and that was like the goodbye from my son to all the kids. And um, we were not allowed to say that we baked it ourselves because she said, I don't want to eat the crap they make at home. Not trusting the ingredients and I was like, Ugh. so I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your this. The girl sat there, the specific girl with the black curly hair, oh, I was, was adorable, sat there with the other kids, thank God, she was in a row. And I thought, I'm going to give her a message. And I said to her, when I came there with the cakes, and I said, you know, you are such a wonderful girl. Never forget that. Never forget that. The others were looking like, what is she doing? And you saw her left. Five minutes later, she came over to me, oh, here's mom. May I have a play date with Ophir? <laughs> That's my oh. saying. You wanted more of that. Yes, yes. And I felt like, I know that you can sometimes hear a remark that yeah. changes your life, yes. stays with you forever. Yeah. You're a wonderful girl. Never forget that. Yes, yes. And, um, and, and the others were looking, you know, and I think it's terrible what we do. Yes. And I believe that we, if we change our way in school, how we behave towards kids with all the the, the the rules because you don't have to be afraid my kids have not bar have barely been punished and not and not being rewarded either you know we had these talks about it. i always had the conversations and if things there are consequences and that is not punishment there is a consequence yeah if you for instance borrow my car and you're 17 and you drive too fast i don't have peace right so i need to trust you now if having adhd and driving fast goes very well together right so i was like I don't want to be worried and I don't want to say you're not going to get your license because you are so hyper. No. Mm -hmm. And he was already much better than when he was 17, but still say so you can only, I need to trust you. If I see a fine or I notice anything that you drove too fast, you cannot borrow my car anymore. Not as punishment. I say to you, it but as I, I want to feel at peace. I don't want to worry about anything. And if I cannot trust you, sorry, we have a problem here. I cannot trust you. Don't get my car. And that it makes so much sense when then a child says, yeah, I don't want to violate the trust of my mother. But mm -hmm. if I start to threat, if you do that, you cannot because blah, 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 then it is a threat. And a threat often asks for, well, let me see how far the I can what? go. It's the worst you can do. I agree. I agree. I think that they all fall into the same bracket where it's all some form of, right? Like, I mean, threats and threats will often come from like manipulations and that is where you're offering rewards and things like that. Or even like you're saying, like if you're trying to like punish or something like, oh, now I'm going to make sure you're never going to have that. Right. As opposed to having a conversation about it and making it make sense. Right. Because I feel like even sometimes maybe somebody's driving the car fast and then sometimes we get like how do i say we get in our emotions and instead of us to actually like you're saying oh if you're driving that that doesn't feel safe i can't even use my car sometimes we get in our emotions and we make it something bigger like okay now i'm going to take away i'm going to ground you and i'm going to take away your phone and then something unrelated to what you're upset about but you just feel like i want to cost my child yeah pain. yeah yeah I want thank you for bringing that up Right. And yeah. then that's the problem. And the child feels pain and the child doesn't learn. The child would always, I feel like there's always that thing of, oh, my mom is always overreacting. Right. As opposed to like, and then you are missing a powerful opportunity to teach cause and effect yeah. when you do that. Right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 
it means in a powerful opportunity to teach cause and effect so and regardless of and, and even um how was i even going to say this and even regardless of that it's also important to know that not to even forget that whatever the underlying cause is it would still need to be addressed but like it's also very important to know that it, the whole purpose is to just show cause and effect and not to seek vengeance and i know there's that because i did talk about how we tend to do me versus you against me versus the situation right where we're now trying that's when we're trying to do me versus you we now go in attack mode and then we're now constantly like meeting punishments so yeah but yeah basically when we're talking about rewards as well or even labels like how you were saying they label the girl a like bad girl i feel like i hate like good girl bad girl he's um he is it oh this child listens i i feel like for me it's he's a walk in progress every time i see him take a step in the right direction i would point it out so he knows that I did that right oh no nah, i that you were feeling upset that time and you actually put the toy down that took a lot of self-control i just point out what i see so he knows that i did see that progress yeah yeah and he goes wrong he's not a bad child this is the moment that we can reflect and learn how to be better now can we say yeah. a story about what happened right and then how can we do this differently so there's it's, for me it's like it's progress we're looking at right if he takes a step back i tell him how or how he can move forward so it's not like good bad and then i leave it at my child's discretion to be constantly on his toes on what will mommy think is good what will mommy think is bad no no nah, i need you to think from within what do you think is good right i'm going to keep teaching you i need you to have that compass inside of you when you're a teenager or when you're a full-grown man to have that compass because you've reflected over and over and over with me and problem solved and now at this point you're a full-grown man and you don't need to be looking would they say i'm good would they say i'm bad you know you understand how it works you know you you know that even if it's something yeah. wrong you know how to fix it you know how to stop think and fix it because i know there was this thing of me always getting stuck in mistakes or failures because it was just like i'm spending time beating myself down that oh i made a mistake how could i be so silly i'm probably doing this for like a day or two or how could i have failed this and i'm taking it quite a while to get myself back on feet right like i feel bad like or i do something like maybe i even hurt someone and i feel like oh i'm such a bad person like how I never think about how can I fix this, right? How can mm -hmm. how can I move forward from this? How can I problem that? So the yeah. minute I started doing that with my son, problem solving, mistakes, or whatever it is, or a behavior that is not right, when we problem solve how we can do it differently, and he doesn't have to be perfect. Not because I taught him the first time. Okay, um, so okay, I think I'm just going to stop now. No, but not because I taught him the first time, doesn't mean he has to do it. So you have a question. That's why I'm going to stop. So the person asks, please, can you share tips, tips to teach, stop, think, and act? Oh, that's exactly the formula. Okay. That's what you, that's what you do. First, you explain it. You think something. And then they want friends to do something. You see that? So it is like stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think. Can I do this or can I not do this? Mm -hmm and then you act right it's that simple but you can do that you can speak about it but you can work on that every day i would like to give a feedback about what you were just saying because you know that we spoke about adjustment how huh? like if you're judging and criticized that it, nobody feels good it's negative energy nobody likes to be criticized and then you can be attacked for that too it's always the way how you see it but you mentioned something beautiful of course you want to instill intrinsic values and that's what you were just describing you want them to be independent individuals that are not so dependent on the on the um approval of others you speak about that and then okay you shouldn't be doing this that shouldn't you know you don't know how to get there if you're not raised there if you send your child to the room and because you're angry about what they did you don't teach anything. You teach only conditional love. I don't like you now, what you did. You can still say that I'm so shocked. I'm so hurt as a parent. You can say that. I'm so, I'm really hurt or shocked that this happened. I need to think about this for a while. If you send them to their room, they, you hope they will think about it. Most of the time they don't, they feel miserable. And they learn, if I behave in a certain way, I'm deprived of love. I have seen parents 
around where we lived here in Florida. They did this so adamantly. You came home with a C from school or a D and they were not allowed to play with their friends for a week. So you have the deprivation of love and kindness that you withdraw and withhold from your child as a punishment for behavior. Well, wow, that's the prepaving for the cold shoulder. And you know, I don't want sex with you because I'm mad what you did. It's the same thing. It's yeah. you really, oh. I mean, it's too, it's too stupid for words if you think about it. And you know where it all comes down to in a way it's fear because we want our kids to be happy we want our kids to be successful how do we get there now we do not really know so we let's do it how our parents raised us and if that was pretty nice and we we're okay with that because thankful thank god they're still also nice families and nice things but if you go into that way most of the problems and as a therapist i've seen that often most of the problems in the, the people have in my practice is that they deep down somewhere don't feel good enough for whatever reason and that is often the result of all this you don't have, and and that is much higher for adhd to begin with now what i would like to share with this is a little bit uh further in the future when i read about the research that adult adhd and later in life i have really seen men crying in their 40s 50s because i work in a group with that for a while that they they got medication and like Adderall and they felt a calmness in themselves that they never had. And is that we ruined our relationship. We ruined so much in our life. Now I'm not saying go to run now to take Adderall because these kinds of people, this, those people had not had any way of therapy. They were only punished all the time, right? You're wrong. You did, you cannot go, don't stop. So your self-esteem is super low. Your self-love and self-appreciation is super low add the rest up it's all damaged so you have a very damaged thing about yourself how can you expect things go well you know so that impacts your relationships for sure so then if they and, and that is something like wow you know how important it is and again if the school system as it is is so based on punish and reward like the skinner box that's pure the skinner box in practice then for adhd it's very difficult because it's almost stupid those kids are like this is stupid why do I have to go to my room? Because why do I have to go to my room? Because I jumped out of the window. That has, that's no connection. And I have to tell a very serious story about this. And that broke my heart. Because I speak like the way I speak. And I speak for schools now and then. And it was at the school when my kids was in. And there was a woman that said, I, I would love to what you hear. I want to talk more to you. Yada, yada, yada. It was just privately. Okay, fine. She adopted two children. And the mother of the children was a family member and was a drug addict. And she, this woman, of course, I don't say her name, was very much uh, into Louise Hay. I don't know if you know Louise Hay, but that was like a woman that changed a lot in the world for women in general because she's very love based. She had a terrible life, incest victim, and made her life so successful. And she became the founder of Hay House. So her message is very, very powerful. So that was the generation that run with Louise Hay. And I taught my kids that too because it's so valuable i will send you a link about it okay. and um so she did that but she had issues with her adopt adopted daughter who was 16 15 16 and she went to a, a typical therapist it was in boca raton in florida and the advice was take her phone away give her punishment uh, send her to her room let her not play with her friends not let her not speak to her friends take her jewelry away take her clothes, her favorite clothes away. So the mother was, that same mother was there in the audience and said, I took everything away from my kid and the problems are not solved. No, of course not. Of course. So she got so tired of it and was a lovely mother. So in the love thing of Louise Hay, but she had never made that connection, how she treated that girl that was adopted and most likely had issues deep within that her own mother and father abandoned her, which is often a thing that happens with adoption and is also, also overlooked because you have to be grateful. Well, of course too, but there is an inner rejection is a very deep point, part of your blueprint, right? Yeah. So I spoke with this woman and I explained to her certain things and I don't know, I, I, we have lost track probably, but happens a lot of course. And the girl is 19 and pregnant Hmm. So in search of love, so in need of somebody that would love her unconditional. Yes. So what's the solution? So let's get a child. And she was in a house you were living with people she didn't have income. And I personally, I draw the conclusion and I'm careful with that, but I 
can see the bigger thing that that probably is very connected with how she was treated with conditional love and not unconditional love. Yeah. founder of Heartbase Solutions, where I help you with psychology, neuroscience, and holistic modalities transform your life, career, and relationships. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified for new videos. Any link that I mentioned in this video, you can find in the description box below.